Sixty-three. Let's go together. Alas, and be my savior, please, and be my soul. Let's go together. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior? That's true. 
Sabbath. If you came with your hands, just wave at me. May God bless you. Today is the third Sabbath of March. The, among the high Sabbaths that we have had, beginning with the two Sabbaths of Wose, and today being the third one. It is also in the third month of the semester and third month of the year. We welcome you that God may bless you as you minister, as we minister to you this morning. Today, the Sabbath School program is being led by the Treasury Department, which is headed by our treasurer, Mr. Rio Katam. I will ask him to wave for us. The other team members are uh, Sister Delvin. She can wave for us. Mr. Daudi Munema and Sister Lucy Jiriri and I. We are also accompanied by one of the members of the superintendent team, Brother Paul Olima. He can wave for us. Feel welcomed and we are going to begin the program with the song, Hymn 337, led by the song team. Three three seven. Him now I love to proclaim him, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and I'm 
and wins my rapture content. I know that the light of His presence with me doth continually dwell. day again. Let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, what in heaven we come before thy throne of mercy this hour, O God. We want to invite your presence be with us, O God, throughout this day. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Wonderful. It's a special Sabbath today. We have a special mission reading. Just like last Sabbath, our mission reading today is from a wonderful country in Eastern Africa by the name Rwanda. Now today our title is No Debt. No Debt. What a way to have uh, such a mission this quarter. When we are ending, we discussed about debt some few weeks ago, discussing ab about our management of money. Now, today's story is about a young lady. Her age, about our ages too. Well, her name is Lidi. Now, depending on how you pronounce that name, for other people it could be Lydia, but the spelling reads it as Lidi. Lidi grew up from a poor family in Rwanda, and she had great dreams to study in the university, get a job, and go back to help her family. Just like that's the dream for many of us here. And this wasn't easy. She passed so well in high school, but didn't manage to get the few government scholarships that the country offers for people going for undergraduate in the university. Now, that could be your case. Finished, passed so well in high school, but did not manage to be sponsored by the government to study. And so she was called to the top university in her country. Now in Kenya, that would be UON, and in her country, it was University of Rwanda. Yeah, University of Rwanda, University of Kigali. Now she was there, she was given a course to study. Life was very hard, because there was no support, her parents were poor, there was no one to help her study. She was stranded. Her parents prayed about it, and also looked for ways to help her. They finally got an admission to the university Adventist University of Central Africa. That would be like Baraton, this place. And she was admitted to take a nursing course, degree in nursing. Now, I would think that would be a little more expensive compared to a public university, but the Lord is faithful. She was admitted and got to finish her first year successfully. Actually, just before she finished her first year, she had a prayer that if the Lord would help her complete her first year successfully, then she would give her heart for God because in her earlier years in life, she was exposed to friends who are Adventists and had a lot of good experiences about Adventists and what their belief systems were and she yearned to be one. But only if the Lord would help her finish her first year. So it came to pass, 
she finished it successfully without any issues, passed nicely. And this was that time when she expected to give her life to Jesus, but she said, oh God, no, I think I'm not so ready. I think I've got to put one more option for you. Then she decided to say, dear Lord, my year two is becoming really tough. Started falling back on fee payment and she had some debt accruing. And this was problematic. Her family was not having ways to see her through. She prayed again and said, God, if you help me finish my year two successfully, sure enough, I'll give my life for you. Now that I know the truth. And that too came to pass. That year, she finished successfully. And this time around, she decided to be true to her promise. And she gave her heart to Jesus. What do you say? And now, her troubles did end there. Already, debts were accruing about her fee. And she was troubled. Now she was beginning her third year. Only one, one or two more years to go. Maybe finishing at year four. And Lydi was troubled. Her family was still poor. and She didn't have a way out. Like most of these Adventist universities, there's work program. She enrolled to help her cater for her school fees needs. So she was studying and also taking this nursing program. I mean, it's a lot. It's easy to take another program and do work program, but nursing and work program was really hard, and she worked it out. Now, during this same time, there was a special offering, 13th Sabbath offering, and by the way, friends, today is also another 13th Sabbath. We have a special offering to help in projects around the world. So they kick up and finish up successfully. Now, there was a special offering done in 2016 to help build the School of Medicine in the Adventist University of Central Africa. And during this time of her study, she got an opportunity in her third year to work at this construction site. Well, that work isn't easy. In Kenya, we call it Mjengo. And it was, it was, it was a lot for her. She would feel so sad and discouraged watching her friends go out for class and coming back to study and do other things and she felt so sad thinking and myself I'm here I'm struggling I mean I can't even attend classes but she got solace in the few friends she had who were all the time praying with her well in her class when they were starting year one they was about 70 and this time they were about 35 and they were still continuing with the progress and she got so worried and one day she was tearfully sharing her story in her third year still with a lecturer. The lecturer gave her hope by telling her the Lord will do something. Just be, hold, hold your peace, hold your horses, trust in the Lord and the Lord will surely do something. Finally, later on when she went back to the lecturer for hope, the lecturer challenged her to do a petition with the Lord and she gladly took up the chance to pray for one week consistently for the Lord to open ways. Dear friends, when that one week was done, nothing seemed to have happened. She was still in huge debt. By the way, I tried to do the math. She had owed the school, she was owing the school about one million. Did they call it Rwandese money or something like that? But I tried to convert that to Kenya shillings. It was coming to around 210,000 Kenya I mean, that's a lot of money. And she was troubled. But the lecturer persuaded her to continue for one more week and see what the Lord was able to do. And at the end of that second week, the 14th day of her prayer, there was an expected call from a family friend. Sure enough, dear friends, the Lord had answered Lydie's prayer. This point in time, Lydie was offered by this family friend the exact amount of money she needed to pay off her debt and finish her schooling. And in 2021, 2021 November, when he just finished out of COVID, Lydie graduated successfully after her fourth year of study in the Adventist University of Central Africa pursuing a bachelor's degree in nursing. What do we say? Friends, you might be dealing with tough debt today, but the Lord is sure enough to see you through successfully. You might go through tough times like Lydie would have to go through, 
but the Lord will make it work for you. You might miss out on nice opportunities like finishing high school and you don't have scholarship and yet you got an A maybe and other people who have C plus have it and you may not understand why, but the Lord has a reason. Just stay put, stand firm and believe in the Lord and the Lord shall succeed you. Now part of that today, today being a 13th Sabbath, part of the 13th Sabbath you are giving out today will be going up to Rwanda and other places including Kenya to help in mission activities around the world, going to build up infrastructure for God's children to be welcome wherever they could be. Now, part of this offering will be helping the Adventist University of Central Africa to build faculty homes for the lecturer and faculties who will be helping out in the School of Medicine. Give cheerfully. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. May you be blessed. Happy Sabbath and happy day. I'm going to welcome Sister Ruth and Sister Diana for a musical item. Welcome. The Lord is good and all the time. We are going to do a song uh, in Kisi version. It's a song that is well known called Ayerera. And um, it simply means that this world is not our home. We need to be very fast and hasten for us to go to a home where the Lord has prepared for us. Terina go semeria, en sengo sambuere, aye beke ange, se chinchera chonsi, e konuge kobuga, tomoroto tomonene. Onye dirinche, na wate chimbaba, nanga na iruruka, ingi komo chora, babeli yambarore. Vave no kumbarore, amona bande, vame nye taroro. Onye ndirinche, na wate chimbaba, anga na iruka, inyi komo chorya. Vave li ambarore, vave no kumbarore, amona bande. Vame nye taroro, ayerera, ayerera, oye tige ense, teri na go semerya, ense ngo sambwere, aye veke ange, se chinche rachion si, eko nuge kobuga. Tomoro toto monene, tore no mogoko, tome nye te amo, korende wangoiga. Ngoti gana tore, kero yo marare, ima sembera, buya sokorara, serietari omonene. Tore no mogoko, tome nye te amo, korende wangoiga. Ngoti gana tore, kero yo marare, ima sembera, buya sokorara. Rara, serietario monene, aye aye rara, oye tige ense, teri na go semeria, ense ngo sambuere, aye beke ange, se chinche rachion si, eko nuge kobuga, tomoro toto monene. 
Sechi ni bo chavo, banda sechi semi, banda se me goko, ebio bion sin viere, que aguera ne bien se, oco nuge cobuga, tomoroto tomorene, bande va se me ye, sechi ni bo chavo, banda sechi semi, banda se me goko, ebio bion sin viere, que aguera ne bien se, eco nuge cobuga, tomoroto tomorene, aye aye ra, oye tige en se, terina go se meria, en se go sambuere, aye veke angem, se chinchera chonsi, eco nuge cobuga, tomoroto tomorene. Samaria, and saying with somewhere, I have a king, searching chair at your sea, a conuge coga, tomorrow to tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I did it all. Oh, yeah, tea and say, Tiri Nago Samaria, and saying with somewhere, I have a king, searching chair at your sea. Eko nuge kubuga tumuro toto mwenene Aye ayerera oye tige ense teri nago semeria ense ngo sambwere Aye beke ange se chinche rachonsi Eko nuge kubuga tumuro toto mwenene Eko nuge kubuga tumuro toto mwenene Praise the name of the living God. The Lord is good and all the time. For sure we have run out of time, but uh, we teach children and we say, if you cannot explain it in a word, even if you're given a thousand words, it still won't make sense. Amen? I'll try to be as brief as possible. This is the treasury team. And I mean, we will tell you many things, but we must tell you about your giving, how your giving is, and all that. Now, the Lord is not the author of confusion. The Lord desires that his work may be carried forward with thoroughness and exactness, that he may be exalted. Psalms tell us the Lord is the owner of everything, Haggai, First Chronicles, and the Bible has a thousand things about what the Lord says as the owner. Well, I want to tell you two things today. We will mention about the trust fund and non-trust fund. Trust fund, this include tithe, a portion of combined offerings, camp meeting, 13th Sabbath offering, and so on and so forth. Non-trust fund, this is basically focusing on a portion of combined offerings and the departmentals. Now, listen to me. Let us have the screen up, Adamu, about tithe, on how your tithe is shared. When you give 100 shillings for tithe, this is how it will be distributed. Listen to me. When you give 100 shillings, two shillings will be sent to the general conference. Are we together? Are you following? Seven shillings will be sent where? To the division. Fifteen shillings will be sent to the union. Twelve point five of your hundred shillings will be sent to the retirement fund. Three shillings to the bursary fund. A shilling for VOP. One for Adventist uh, AMC. And then we have 0 0.5 of your giving will go to the FM radio and the TV funds. Three shillings will go to the ECD medical school, and then 55 shillings of your tithe will be sent to the field of the conference, whatever is applicable to you. Are we together? So when you give, when you give that 100 shillings today, at least you know how it will be distributed. Let us go to the combined. Uh, down with the next. When you give your combined, remember, combined is shared 50-50. 50% 50 -50. 50 remains in the local church, and then another 50% is remitted to the, to the conference or the field. When 50% is remitted to the field, let's say 50 shillings, 20 shillings will remain in the field. Five shillings will be sent to the union, five shillings to the division, and 20 shillings where? To the general conference. What about the camp meeting offering? This is how your camp meeting is, offering is distributed. 25% will be sent to the union, and 75% will remain in the local field. What about 13 Sabbath offering? 100% will be given 
for the projects. And uh, uh, Daudi has just told us about the many projects. L let's look at something interesting. Adam, do you have that picture for BIS up? Yes, that, do you know that school over there? That is Barton International School that was funded by 13 Sabbath offering. This quarter we are giving also for ECD. We are home and we'll give to, to Rwanda, I can see Uganda, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and so on and so forth. Well, let me, let me come to non-trust fund. We are out of time. Non-trust fund is basically given when you give for departmentals and 50% of the combined offering. And this will go for evangelism. This will go to the deconry, the communication for VBS, music, church budget, needy kitty. And let me pause for a moment at needy kitty. I heard of a case yesterday of a student who has gone for days without food. Dear students, why should you go without food when the church is here? I mean, it, it disturbs. Why should that even happen? No, no, no. When you give, well, let's say, let's begin with the members. The members, let's give so that when others are in need, they can also be supported so that they can go through life. Well, uh, the, the, the non-trust fund will go to Pathfinders, Adventurers, Master Guide, Outreach, Deconry, Communication Department, to enable the sound to be loud and clear to you, VBS, Music Department, Church Beautification, Needy Kitty, uh, Pathfinders, Adventurers, Master Guide, the list is long. Uh, we have the Lower Division, Children Ministries, Personal Ministries, Education Department, Health Ministries, and Publishing Ministries. Well, church, the call today is that let, let us be faithful in giving because even a shilling that is given by you must be accounted for. Are we together? And this is unique in the Adventist church. Every fund that you give you must receive a receipt in return. It does not go directly to the pastor. We send it to the union. Some remains the church and it is properly accounted for. God has entrusted his treasure to stewards that with them they may advance his course and glorify his name. He has not entrusted these treasures to men that they might use them to exalt and glorify themselves. But instead, men are to use them to bring many to his kingdom. Amen? May the Lord help us to be faithful in giving for his cause in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, God is good once more and all the time. We want to appreciate the Treasury Department for giving us such a wonderful program. Maybe you can wave to us. Thank you so much. We are glad that today we were being added by Elder Peter Murray, who is our department chair in uh, song services, he can wave to us. Thank you so much. Let us take the following announcements keenly as regarding to our Sabbath school classes. We are not going to have our classes here. We are going to go to different classes. So take key note of this. Our classes will be in Science Building, room 239, room 247, and room 347. We also have MLS rooms, and we also have AVS 10, and rooms 15 and 16, and of course all the rooms around room 15. Please don't go to the auditorium and humanities. The humanities building is preserved for another purpose. Only the baptismal class will go to humanities conference hall. Kindly note that. As we are going to end this program, we believe that God is going to bless us throughout this Sabbath as we are waiting to celebrate the Holy Communion together. Feel blessed. Shall we rise for prayer? Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for a beautiful Sabbath. We thank you for the beautiful congregation. We pray that you may forgive us our sins, be with us, help us be good stewards, and help us give with a clean heart, and also love one another as you require of us. We pray this, trusting and believing in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
morning, church. I want to echo what the superintendent said. Let's go to the rooms that indicated, and we want to have a few, one or two classes in here. Have you ever felt as if you're putting your money into a black hole when you give your weekly mission offerings? Maybe you should think about it more as dumping your offerings into the river, not to get rid of them, but to help mission flourish around the world. Mission offerings don't seem to get as much attention anymore, yet they're still vitally important to supporting work around the world. Think of your mission offerings as a river flowing through the entire world providing life-giving water to help sustain the mission fields. You probably know countries and projects that are supported by part of your 13th Sabbath offering. But what about the regular mission offerings you give each week? Where do they go? What do they support? And what do they achieve? You may be surprised to learn that your weekly mission offerings help support the work of about 400 missionary families around the world. In fact, 70% of the weekly mission offerings each quarter helps to support overseas missionaries and the international work of the church. Appropriations from the General Conference to World Divisions, the Middle East North Africa Union Mission, and the Israel Field help these regions build and sustain mission activities in their territories, like water irrigating fields when there's not enough rain. The remaining money helps various institutions and agencies that serve the World Church. For example, it helps the compassionate medical mission work of Loma Linda University, the outreach of Adventist World Radio, and the humanitarian ministry of ADRA, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency. In recent years, millions of people from challenging areas of the world have found salvation in Jesus and have joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In 2018, every 22 seconds, someone became an Adventist, and every four hours, a new church was organized. Thanks to your offerings and the global mission focus, Thousands of new congregations have been established in unreached areas and among new people groups. But after these new believers have been baptized, how are they nurtured? How do we make sure that their new faith is strengthened and they grow as disciples? Your River of Mission Offerings helps grow and sustain new work throughout the world. Please keep this life-giving river flowing. Thank you for your faithful weekly mission offerings and your continuing prayers for Adventist Mission. What if I told you that you didn't need a degree to become a manager? That there was someone who was willing to trust you enough to give you this position today? The surprising reality is that you are already a manager. Blink your eyes and wiggle your fingers. There is a beautifully complex machine attached to you that is, in fact, you. Look around at the contents near you, at the things that you own the phone or laptop you are using to view this video. 
There is an infinite amount of productivity and value that can come from utilizing these objects. And if you've done enough learning and maturing, you might even have a career or a steady source of income. You are a manager. Every day you make choices to invest in the assets you've been given to manage or to divest, to add value to what you are and own, or to decrease value. Call it stewardship or managing what God has entrusted to you. Either or, this role is a privilege and a precious responsibility. It was given out of love because God trusts you and He wants to partner with you to make amazing things happen. Are you managing well what God has given you? Your next promotion could be right around the corner. everyone happy sabbath yeah it is a blessed sabbath indeed and we thank god for what was supposedly new year we no longer say new year you're already in it we thank god there are rains the new year looks good now uh the first quarter is done and the title that we were given was managing for the master till he comes managing for the master Till he comes. Thank you, Elder. Now, uh, I want to thank every one of you for making an appointment with this class. And even though we, so many of us here, I want to believe we will actively participate, especially for the beautiful lesson that has been uh, to us. Maybe before we get to begin, I invite us to bow our heads for a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for thy grace. Thank you for the gift of this blessed Sabbath morning and thank you for financial advices and counsel that we continue to receive from the holy writings. As you even discuss this uh, Sabbath as we conclude the quarter, speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, once again, welcome. Managing for the master till he comes. As we began this lesson, we were told or we're given the very core reason as to why we are part of God's family. And in God's family, when God created Adam and Eve, they were given some duty to do. Part of their core business before even the Sabbath rest was work. There was then the Sabbath, and there is family. And so, because you're talking of finances, we're talking of work. What do you, how do you earn your living? Um, in as far as not all are privileged to earn, how do we take care of those who have needs around us? Do they uh, matter to us? One person, this one was trending on, uh, you call them the memes, one of these, them was something uh, very important arranged, that th we have this group of people, we have the young, the youth, and the aged. Now, there are three items in question. The energy, the time, and money. Which one is missing among the young people? There can only be one item missing between energy, time, and money, what do young people miss? They have the time. They have the energy. They don't have money, okay? Let's come to the young people, the young adults. Uh, what are they missing? Energy, time, money. The adults. They start earning some money, okay? They still have the energy, but these are the guys who are running short of what? They don't have time. Someone is working in five places. They hardly even catch up with sleep, okay? Those are the young adults. Then the aid, what do they miss? Those who are aged. They now have good savings, good money, okay? They have, we talk of time, they are now retirees, they are at home. So they have time. But unfortunately, what is missing? They don't have the energy, okay? When you are young, you can drive from this place to Mombasa non-stop as a young person, okay? When you age, it's not fun growing old, okay? When you age, you realize even Akuru is too far. You may need to branch somewhere first for a short break. And before you get to Nairobi, you need to take some nap before you proceed. That's all the people. Now, we are given these resources. We are given our time. But then we need to plan. You remember somewhere we were talking of planning for old age, is it? Let it not surprise you. You should plan for it. And one good news that we learned about that lesson was that even the retirees are not tired. Uh, Ellen White, Sister Ellen White, wrote uh, the, one of her books at the age of 70. So when you get retired, write more books. You're not some idle energy. 
you can still be productive, okay? Now, as we close, rewards of faithfulness. Rewards of faithfulness. Key text, open with me the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 21. Matthew 25, uh, 21. That is our key text for today. And please, class, prepare to contribute. Actively participate, including the online viewer. Send us your remarks there. We, we will see how to get around and see some of your questions or some of your comments. So we are reading through 25 verse 21. And the Bible says, The master answered, You did well. You are a good and loyal servant. Because you are loyal with small things, I'll let you uh, care for much greater things. Come and share my joy with me. A reward. I'll make you other version will say, I'll make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Uh, you were a faithful over a few things. Now, well done. When you get, get to ask somebody well done, there's something that has been done for, to deserve that well done, right? In other words, the text we are getting is Matthew chapter 25. And you know what's happening in chapter 24? What is told in Matthew chapter 24? Disciples are meeting Jesus somewhere. And they are concerned, tell us what shall happen at the end times, okay? After telling all the stories about the end times, all the signs about the end times, Jesus shares some stories that in chapter 25 now, give some parables that relate one of them to even financial management. And this one is mentioned in terms of there is a reward. There is a reward. Let, let me take us to the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 19. Verse 7 to 11. Open with me the book of Psalms. Psalm number 19, verse 7 to 11. When we talk of reward, can we get to heaven because of we worked hard, we have been gifted for the good things that we have done? We have religions that will teach that in the end, we we'll weigh you on balances. You are good and you are evil. Whoever wins will decide where you go. Is that how we work with heaven? Is that how the reward that scheme that we are talking about, that God will reward the goodness that we did, or that our goodness can us, earn us a place in heaven? Do we still have a place for grace if we are talking of our goodness then? Chapter 19, verse 7 to 11, the Bible says, The teachings of the Lord are perfect. They give new strength. The rules of the Lord can be trusted. They make plain people wise. Um, the orders of the Lord are right. They make people happy. The commands of the Lord are pure. They light up the way. Respect for the Lord is good. It will last forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are completely right. They are worth more than gold, even the purest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even the finest honey. By them, your servant is warned. Keeping them brings you great reward. Keeping them brings you great reward. Moreover, in King, uh, New King James Version, it concludes by saying, moreover, by them, your servant is warned, and in keeping them is great reward. When you talk of reward, do we keep the commandments then so that we can make things right? Is it that we are gifted or we are rewarded because of loyalty to the commandments? A question to us, our mic ready. Somebody tell us a place of grace. When you mention here a reward, are we being rewarded then for the good things that we do? Somebody bring us the subject of grace. Where will grace happen or come in? If at all we are talking of rewarding loyalty to commandments. Hands up, let me see. The mic will come to you. Just raise up your hand. Where is the place of grace? Are the questions coming too early for us? Where is the place of grace? Reward. We are talking here of rewarding faithfulness. When we talk of rewarding faithfulness, does it substitute in terms of the faithfulness here? Does it talk about keeping the law, being true to the law, word to word? Where is the place of grace? Uh, our hands are still warming up. We are yet to be ready on that. Uh, let's bring the text of um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. He Hebrews 11, verse 6. They may help us get to understand better, get to know how, how can we be rewarded really. 
Which faithfulness is Christ desiring to reward? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. The Bible says, Without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. Which one is coming uh, to the fore here? We had talked of uh, rewarding because of observing the law, but what is being mentioned here? What element is coming out? Faith. Without what? Faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, this, the, if you read around that context there, we are finding one man called Abraham, who was counted uh, faith, or it was counted to him as righteousness, through the acts of faith. Not only Abraham, but many other characters are listed there in the book of uh, Hebrews. Allow me to bring you a quote from one of the books, The Great Controversy. Uh, you have the title now as The Great Hope. And it says, Human language is inadequate to describe the reward of the righteous. It will be known only by those, to those who behold it. No finite mind can comprehend the glory of the paradise of God. There is a gift that is being given. And those who can better comprehend this are those who will behold it, who are beneficiaries of the same. No human language can describe that. What a better gift to wait for? Briefly, we'll be talking of that gift, which is actually eternal life. But before we bring eternal life, let's go around the Beatitudes. The book is Matthew chapter 5. Beatitudes, Matthew 5, verse 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. When Jesus is teaching, there is a mention here of also a reward. Which reward is Christ speaking of when teaching the, uh, the Beatitudes? Or rather giving this list of what you've been uh, summarized as Beatitudes. People will insult you and hurt you. They will lie and say all kinds of evil things about you because you follow me. But when they do, but when they do you will be happy. Verse 12, rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward um, waiting for you in heaven. People did the same evil things to the prophets who lived before you. Reward, reward. Looks like the point here is or rather what I'll pick out of this context is um, you may not even get a better welfare when you are carrying on in this world below. But don't bother. If you suffer persecution, if you suffer a life of not having really enough, a life of struggle, don't be bothered. Instead, what should you do? Rejoice. Why are we rejoicing? There is a greater reward for you in heaven. There is a greater reward for you in heaven. Um, Okay, talk of now reconciling this reward. How do you gift someone? Do you base it now on the works, which will be still be expounding on the same the issue of talents, or we base it on what Christ has done? Reward. There's a reward to come. But how do you give this reward? For our reward to be very fair, there must be a standards to be met. And by the time someone is gifted, everyone is satisfied that that one was not corruption because the right person has been gifted. How do God's children get to be gifted? Let me still go back to Hebrews. Hebrews 11, you remember that story of faith? By faith, by faith. The next after Hebrews 11 is Hebrews 12. Let's pick the first verses of Hebrews 12. Verse 1, probably even verse 1 and 2 of Hebrews 12. After a long list of by faith, there is a reward. Um, fine, verse 12. Chapter 12, verse 1, I'll give it to, yes, let's speak on verse 1 first. I hope you are there, Hebrews 12, verse 1, and the Bible says, we have, our, we have around us many people whose lives tell us what faith means. So let us run the race that is uh, before us and never give up. We should remove from our lives anything that will get in the way and the sin that so easily holds us back. King James will say that besets us. Verse 2. Let us look only to Jesus, the one who began 
Other version will say the author and finisher of our faith. The one who began our faith and who makes it perfect. He suffered death on the cross, but he accepted the shame as it were nothing because of the joy that God put before him. And now he's, um, he's sitting at the right side of God's throne. Verse 3. Thinking or think about Jesus' exam example, held, um, he held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So do not get tired and stop trying. Anything we get for ourselves here about the fight, the fight that we are facing? Who is, uh, who is uh, given as an example here? Did Jesus, was Jesus served a good life when he carried here? Was he served a good life? Was he treated well? In fact, the very same people he came for are the ones who said at the cross, do what? Crucify him. Crucify him. And, but then as to us, is Paul would put it, we have been left an example, and we're not only left an example by Christ, we ourselves should also be an example to other believers, okay? So that by looking unto us, and the hope we have, which hope is that? There's a greater reward that is promised to us. And if you look into that greater reward, which is eternal life, then we, are, we'll, we shall do well. Bring in the book of Romans 11 verse 6. Romans chapter 11 verse 6. Eleven verse six. That will now clarify the question that I've been putting forth unto us. Surely, is it about salvation by works? Who among us can be saved if it were to be salvation by works? If you were to stand here today and you're told, now we want to qualify you to heaven, who will bring their works as a, a minimum requirement to step in? Eleven verse six would say, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise. Grace no long, is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer um, grace. Otherwise, work is no longer uh, work. Now, rewards instead are mere outworking of what God has done for us and in us. It is not what we can do by ourselves. When we understand the difference between salvation by grace and a reward according to works, then we'll be able to conclude today's lesson. Because many a times, people have had, there's a slim line between the two. And James would take some energy to explain this, James chapter two, really what is the borderline between works? And would even pose a question, show me your works without faith, then I'll show you, or without action, then I'll show my works and actions. Really this should be reconciled, okay? So what God will reward here, according to the text that we, our key text, is that there is a reward really for what you have done. But then how do we separate what you have done and God's uh, input into your life? By the time you still take credit on who you are, then you have lost focus on who you should put your eyes on. Our eyes should be set on who? Jesus and what Jesus accomplished. If you are able to pull out from your pocket, some hundred shillings to give to a poor person. That act is not your own and has nothing to do with accumulating bonga points for heaven, okay? No one will redeem bonga points for heaven. What you are doing is fruits of what? The Holy Spirit. That's what if we can understand that, then we'll understand that there'll be a reward after this. Now, which reward are we waiting for? The book is uh, John 3, 16. You know that very well. What is the text saying? John chapter 3 verse 16. Yes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, how many people are included there? All, all. So we are given this one. And what is uh, the end part of it? What are we to give? Whosoever believes shall have what? Eternal life. They shall not perish but have what? Eternal life. So what is the reward being given from that text? Christ came to give us eternal life. And who is qualified for that eternal life? All. Chapter 6 verse 23 of Romans. Romans 6 23. We not only have eternal life. There is another option as well. Chapter 6 verse 23. Romans 6 23. The Bible says 
Um, okay. When, when people sin, they earn what sin pays. And what does sin pay? Death. But God gives us a free gift. Life forever in who? Christ Jesus our Lord. How many options are presented there? Through sin came what? Death. Which death are we talking of? Eternal death. And through Christ came what? Eternal life. So when we are given a reward, then Christ must be talking of one of the big rewards I came to give to you people is what? Eternal life. And John, the beloved disciple here, John, shares a very interesting story. When Jesus was about to summarize this story down here, he says, Jesus shared a brief story to them. For those who use uh, red letter Bibles, you get this one in red, red letter, John 14, 1 to 3. And Jesus himself promising something as well. Not only eternal life, what else is given there? John 14, 1 to 3. What other gift is gifted to us? Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. Other version will say there are many mansions. I will not tell you this if it were not true. I am going there to prepare what? A place for you. Was Jesus here for the first time? Was Jesus on earth for the first time? Did he come the first time to die? Was he here? Do you have people who met him? Did he interact with people? So Jesus was here on earth, right? Then if he tells us in this text, then I'll come again. Is it true? Will he come again? Okay, some theorists would want to let us know that God, because they can't explain so much about things, they get to a point of saying, indeed, there is a God. Everything is created by God. But this is an absent God. After creating everything, he went one way. He will never return again. Affairs of the world will run by themselves. Is that true? No, it's not true, right? Uh, me and I, or rather you and I, know this story well. And this one is promised in John 14, 1 to 3. And verse 3 says, After I go and prepare a place for you, what will happen next? After I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. Okay? That is an interesting part of the promise that Jesus was not only here with us, but that is coming again. And will not only, uh, will not only come or be around for a short while, but will enjoy eternity together. Maybe the book of Revelation would put into perspective what we mean by this, by Jesus coming again, or by Jesus saying or promising, I go and prepare a place for you, and I'll come again. And that one, it's not only us who are seeing it, or who are gifted this promise. Abraham, you know where Abraham is? Which book do you find Abraham? In which book? Genesis, in the beginnings, okay? As part of that genealogy, among the first parents we are meeting is who? Abraham. But Abraham, even in that early beginning, had a hope for a city. A city that we've talked about in John 14, promised by Jesus himself. Early back then, already, Abraham saw the same. The book is Hebrews 10, verse 11. Sorry, 11, verse 10. Hebrews 11, 10. Abraham was waiting for the city that has real foundation. The city planned and built by who? God. In that early times, Abraham looked for a city. A city whose builder is God. A city whose foundation, or rather whose, which has a real foundation, and planned and built by God himself. That was Abraham. But then John the Revelator is making clear to us how that city will look like. Chapter 21 of Revelation. We'll not read the entire text. We'll try to highlight some, some few areas of that. 21. I'll pick on, say, for instance, verse 4. Yeah, Revelation 21, verse 4. Uh, or maybe just for verse 1 to introduce to us what is coming here. Which city is this? The title given is the New Jerusalem. Verse 1, the Bible says, uh, Now, okay, then I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had disappeared. There was no sea anymore. And I saw the holy city, the New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God 
It was prepared like a bride dress for her husband. And, it, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now God's presence is with, is with people. And he will live with them and they will be with his people. God himself will be with them and will be their God. Uh, verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death, sadness, crying, or pain because all the old ways are gone. Look at that city. How is that city? One of the key things that are happening in that city will be able to be with who? God himself. Were there people who touched 